Hello everyone. Today I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction into the Windows subsystem for Linux for Windows 10 for those who have not seen it yet. Uh, for me, I am a person that has a Windows machine. I also have a MacBook Pro, but a lot of times I'm at home, I'm at home and I want to do some work, um, some programming. And working in Windows, if you're not using C Sharp or Eclipse with Java and you're trying to do web development and you want to use Node and packages, it's not always the best environment. So a lot of times I actually go into remote servers to do my work. Now a nice thing that Windows 10 just brought on with its anniversary update is something called uh, Windows 10 Bash. So I have it installed here. You can see Here's my, uh, I have it installed, I have the power fonts installed, I have Z shell, and this is screen fetch, you can see here. Um, one, one bad thing about this Windows subsystem for Linux on Windows 10 is that it just is Ubuntu 1404, not 16. But eventually at some point you should be able to upgrade it. So if you have Windows 10 and you've gotten the latest updates, the anniversary update that just came out August 1st, you should be able to enable this feature and get a very integrated version of Bash on your system, which will be great for development. Now, there's a few caveats I'll explain in a second. There's an installation guide, MSDN installation guide, kind of like the official installation guide on how to do it. It's really simple. Uh, once you get the updates, you just go to settings. And then inside settings, you go to updates and security. Now I'll include this link to the, in the description below. And then you go to for developers and you make sure that this developer mode right here is on. And then once it's on, it may make you reboot your computer. And then once it's on, you should be able to go to look at features. Uh, just type in features here at the bottom in the Windows search. And you can go to, or you can go in the control panel and look for turn Windows features on or off. And once that comes up, which takes always a few seconds, here it is. You can go scroll down and you see something here Windows Subsystem for Linux, and it's in beta right now. And it really is in beta. There's some features that don't work, and I've actually had a crash or two of my computer, which I think it might be related to this Windows Subsystem for Linux beta. Once you check mark that, you can then, once again, I would just search for bash and then bash will come up. And the first time you click on it, it'll install it. Now, one little caveat I had is once I, ins I tried clicking on it and it just did nothing. And then what I realized is after some Googling and research is that if my command, it, it was basically running something from the command prompt. And in my properties, I had set use legacy console I don't know if you can see that. Um, let me see. So use legacy console. I had that check marked, and what that did was that I couldn't. I uh, it wouldn't allow me to install Bash. So I had to go into my command prompt, uncheck that, and then run it. I can you actually can just run it from the command line, and I just typed in Bash, and then it asked it installed everything, and then it asked me if I. Uh, to create a username and password and by default that username has uh, sudoers privileges so you can then create a root user if you need to uh, and, and additionally if you didn't want to do it that way um, you can just type in lx run slash install slash y and you can also uninstall it if you need to if you mess up your bash environment you can uninstall it really easily so that's a couple of ways of handling it there. Once it's installed though, and you search again, you'll have Bash on Ubuntu on Windows. You can run it, and like I said, once you run it, you can then start installing things. One other thing to, to note, I have Z Shell working on here, and let me close this. And on Z Shell, you, it doesn't automatically open as Z Shell. I had to go into, once I had Z Shell installed, I went into the properties here and I had to add in dash C Z S H and then it was able to load Z shell every time I opened it. Otherwise you can't just change the shell easily. So there's a lot of weird quirks like that. Like Ember CLI doesn't quite work right. 
right now I know there is a issue with it. Um, they don't have support for file system watchers like I notify yet. So Angular CLI, Ember CLI, even there's some Rails issues too. They all have issues and give you errors. Um, but that's that's it. If, yeah, if you look here, I think I created a test program. And when I ran Ember, it did not work. Um, I don't have my environment set up right now to show you. But at that time, it didn't work, and that's why I've got this error on the screen. So it's definitely not working quite right for all your development needs. If you're running a MacBook or you're using Ubuntu or some Linux distro out there, you may want to continue to use it and stick with your Mac. Um, but this is very promising. I could see once they get some of the quirks taken care of, once they you know, in support file system watchers, I mean, Node will work a lot better. Um, a, lot, a lot of people are saying, like, yeah, this is a must-have for Node.js development. I think it could be definitely viable on Windows to have a very Linux or Unix-like type environment to do your programming and development. So that's just a few quick things to get you started. Windows 10, I'll leave um, some links in the description below. And also, if you're interested in Windows 10, I'll have a link to where you can buy Windows 10 in the description below. Thanks.